When he turned 23, Peter Dupree was first becoming a household name in South African sport. As a university student, he represented his country in triathlon and several other sports. But a cycling accident in 2003 left Peter in a wheelchair, many believing his dream of taking part in the Olympics was over. But as you are about to see, Peter proved that limitations only exist in the mind. Peter Dupree has always been an exceptional sportsman who aimed for nothing less than excellence. I was into triathlon um, and cycling and running and I came from a running background at school. I did compete provincially in like biathlon, provincially in like cross country at school level. Um, and then also at varsity, I made the South African students team. In the early 2000s, he was rewarded with a Rand Afrikaans University Sports Legend Award. I had the Olympic dream, you know, from, from early on, since I was six years old. But that dream was nearly shattered as Peter was reaching the prime of his career. October the 6th, 2003. Peter was on his way to see a specialist about a hamstring injury he sustained a few days earlier. I decided I'm going to cycle there and back because the, the place I went to was 30 k's away. Um, so I thought I was going to put the training in there and back for the day. Tragically, a car pounced from nowhere, knocking Peter down with bone-crushing force. At that stage, I was lying flat with my chin on the ground and I couldn't move a thing. But no one would have predicted what was to follow. Then when I got to hospital, I started batting to breathe and eventually I was on a ventilator and two weeks later, I started losing my sight or the move, my eye movement. Following several tests, doctors found that he broke several bones in his body, the most severe, his neck. A rising sports star now facing his worst nightmare. I always told people if I couldn't move my legs, um, then my life would probably be over because I was so big in sport. He had two options, to be consumed by the adversity or to work around his new reality. Hard as it was, he chose the latter, being wheelchair bound. A lot of people look at what gets taken away from you um, in, in bad situations. And luckily the way my head works is I look at what gets, you know, what is given to me or what I still have. Several weeks in ICU and then Peter began recovering slowly. When he was finally discharged, he faced daily struggles with things most people take for granted. First time I put one sock on, it took 15 minutes, one sock. So I decided I need to dress myself fully the one day with how I do it and time it. And that took me 50 minutes, so 5-0. But he wasn't going to allow it to get him down. Peter set himself a goal to dress fully in lesser time. And then before I opened my eyes, there I was, fully dressed 15 minutes. And then I decided, okay, well, I'm not going to stop it there. Because as you see yourself getting faster, it motivates you to, and I mean, motivates you with other things as well. This experience made Peter realize that most limitations could be overcome one way or another. By 2005, he was completely independent, returning to the field to take part in wheelchair cycling and other sports. He went on to win the H1.1 Hand Cycle Championship twice in a row. Last year, Peter's childhood dream finally came true when he made Team South Africa for the London Paralympics. An incredible achievement for a man with such great physical limitations. He's got 15% less upper body strength than the rest of us and then zero lower body strength. So he only uses his biceps and his uh, shoulders 
He doesn't even have triceps or forearms or anything like that. He is now preparing for an Ironman competition in Australia. In my own mind, a greater achievement than even a gold medal at the Paralympics will be to finish a full Ironman as a quad. Because that, in my mind, is just still impossible. You know, it was amazing how I actually talked them through the whole scene, directed the scene. Apart from sport and holding a lucrative job at the Johannesburg auditing firm, Peter is a passionate life coach. He's taught me that, you know, if you see that there's a problem, say for instance the hotel we go to is not as accessible as we thought, you know, the first thing you would, you, you wouldn't get angry, you would first say, okay, how are we going to solve this? You know, how are we going to handle this so that it's a positive experience for us? I love Sarah, I do. You know, and yes, we've got a lot of um, bad things happening in our country and politics and this and that. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very optimistic about it and I, I do believe that one man can make a difference but it starts inside yourself and from there you need to realise how you can touch other people on a daily basis. Fascinating stuff. Send us your feedback. Let us know what you think against all odds at enca.com. Coming up. Find out why Marion Cluter and her family voluntarily sold everything they had. News that moves. ENCA.com.